Hey everyone, uh, my name is Saljit Kaltaf, you can call me Sal and in this video we're going to be understanding how to create an Android app from scratch. You won't be doing anything too interesting uh, but that's just largely because we're going to try to build up um, on what we're doing over here in the upcoming videos. All that's required of you for this particular video is that you have an Android studio installed on your system and um, you know at times this is going to get stretched out a little bit but hopefully you know you can just fast forward it so YouTube should be pretty simple the right key um, okay let's start off with creating a fresh um, um, creating a fresh project so we go here new projects and we don't really want anything we can just start off with empty activity and we can we'll talk about what an activity is um, Android Studio Basics and you know just be careful by naming these things and um, we want to use Java because you know that's something that most of you guys are familiar with and just to make sure that we're working in the correct folder So that is not the folder I wanted to work on, so it's uh, this. Let's finish this and we have hopefully a fresh app getting prepared. So it's going to take a little bit of time for Android Studio to create the, let's say the basic code that we'll be working with. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to be actually talking about a few things. So, um, what is a manifest? Um, so, a manifest is essentially a part of your code that contains um, all the information about the stuff that you'll be doing. So, you're kind of informing the hardware. Well, these are the resources that you'll be making use of, and these are the activities. That are going to be running on this thing and it's it's a it's kind of mandatory you kind of have to tell the the device uh, what uses you're going to get out of it so that's essentially what it is we'll talk about what an activity is activity if you've worked with some web development or anything um, or you know even if you scroll through web pages activity is essentially just like a web page um, it it I mean, kind of I wrote some text kind of to explain um, how these things work. An activity is essentially just a web page, um, and that is where all the action will be happening. An activity is kind of divided into three parts, right? So you don't simply just write a page because it's not static. There's logic and a lot of things involved. And the first part of it is registering it in the manifest. So you kind of have to let the manifest know. Um, you know that we're creating a new activity the second part of it is a java folder this is where we can we have all the logic of whatever is happening um and obviously this is not a console log in which we're just printing everything out there is a much more higher definition of the work involved we don't make calls on our console we make them using these um, you know fancy um apps so the do to manage the graphical resources, Android Studio uses something called the res. Um, as you'll see later on, we typically, uh, not typically, all the time, ha name our res files, so they're usually in the layout, we name them exactly as original files. And, um, and usually when you're kind of referring to them, you ref use R to refer to them. Um, so that's a little bit about the activity and we'll actually be creating a new activity as well um, and the last thing that I wanted to talk about was uh, dependency so dependency is for anybody who's worked with Java or C understands that you kind of need to tell the computer whatever uh, libraries that your code is dependent on 
uh, can actually be made use of and it's pretty much the same thing um, we're informing our device if, especially if you're using external APIs we're informing the device of all the different libraries we're expecting to make use of and it's really good because we're working in an ID environment so it's going to really help with um, text prediction you know code prediction um, okay so let's start off by looking at the uh, I'm gonna just have a look at the time so we're five minutes in so we're going to uh, have a look at how the code is organized so first of all in the race what's really interesting for us is the main activity um, this is where we have our hello world happening this is actually called a text view you can see that and we can we can uh, we can actually change that to welcome to 309 I mean it's nothing interesting but nonetheless and in the logic whenever we're going to be referring to it we'll need some sort of an ID and so over here we're going to and and naming conventions are something super super important so uh, what I would do is that I would name it in with activity like prefixes with the activity and 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 then call it button one or whatever just so that we don't have any conflict so let's call it activity um, main text view one so we have an ID and um, yep this this should be fine and Okay, let's have a look at the manifest. So this is a manifest, and what you'll notice is that everything is inside this manifest, this tag, and inside that, this application. Now, you can kind of abstract all of these things away for now. What really is interesting for us is that we have this activity, and really, all that's really interesting about this activity is this, its name, and that it is exported that it's you know it can be used um, everything else is almost unimportant also when the device is loading up when your app loads up it always loads to something we call a home page or you can call it a main so this is what this part is doing an intent filler is kind of letting your device know that we'll be loading everything into um, this this initial activity um, the next step that we'll do to make sure that you know our code actually works is we'll run it on a device an Android device for obvious reasons uh, so if you have just started working on it you probably do not have an emulator device so we will actually create one uh, let me just uh, leave this thing I created earlier and Let's let's actually work with Pixel 2 Excel. Uh, let's just do X and next and and we'll do 30 because 30 is uh, Oh, Nexus. Okay, let's do Nexus S. And we already have something downloaded, so we have a 30 for Nexus S. And um, oh, so since you're running a computer inside your computer, you kind of need to make sure that it doesn't crash if it takes up too many resources. Since I have a dual core processor, um, I don't want it using up uh, my my <laughs> my entire processes. My system will crash. And I, I want to kind of restrict the RAM to, um, to 100 MB. I think that's kind of more than what we'll be needing for this thing. Oh, so this needs 128. Okay. So let's give it 128 and then finish. So this is our own custom Nexus S that we've kind of created right now for our testing purposes. And once we're done, we just close this and we select the device that we created and we press run app. Now, I want you to try to kind of understand what's happening right now. Visuals, uh, Android Studio is 
optimizing all the code that we've written, converting to bytecode.class. And it's once it's kind of optimized and compiled, then it's going to be it it also has to create and run this you know operating system for the new device we've created, which is some extra time that we lose. But essentially the next step is recognizing the device and installing the app that we just created into it and then running it. So those are essentially the processes which are involved in um, testing our app. So the very first time that you run your emulator, it is actually going to take a little bit of time. So we'll see that it is uh, because it's kind of installing probably the operating system as well. So you know this is somewhat more time consuming than you typically As you typically I okay we run into 11 minutes but uh, you know we'll, we'll see how um, we'll see how we you know the whole hello world gets loaded onto the phone um, again this is really basic if you've already gone through it you can just fast forward it to you know until something more interesting happen or just move on to the next video we will be though covering how to create a new activity um, right at the end. So, um, so we have covered this and understand how to create a new activity. So this is the part which um, really is somewhat interesting. And I can talk about it right now because creating a new activity manually requires you to do quite a bit as you can see you have to register with the manifest and you have to create like a java for, uh, a java file in, inside the java folder uh, where you where it will have all the logic and then you need to create a an xml file in the res so that you can you know the the phone actually knows how it's supposed to present um, that particular activity. Um, we can actually skip all of that by um, because of the IDE that we're making use of. Um, I'm going to just put this on the side and show you guys what I mean. Um, waiting for the device to come online. So as I said, this is the first time this emulator is running. If it takes as much time for you guys as it's taken for me, then, you know, I'm running a pretty slow processor, so it might be taking a little bit more time for me. Um, let's see, waiting for... So, again, the first time, every time you press this play button, the first thing that happens is that the Gradle compiles all the code. You can actually press this and compile the code separately. And the next thing that happens is it, it kind of activates your device, like waits for it to wake up and waiting for the device to come online. And the next thing hopefully that's going to happen is installation of the app. And the final thing that will be happening is launching the app. Again, the app isn't anything super interesting right now. It's simply a hello world. Um, it's um, taking its sweet time. Um, as, as you're kind of progressively working through the application, uh, you'll notice that it takes a lot less time because you can essentially just refresh whatever is being so apply all the changes in the code and kind of read on it. Right now it's kind of building everything up from scratch and as you can see it hasn't even started loading my application onto it. It is literally just loading the phone. So, um, you know, that takes its own time. Um,
Okay, so it has finally managed to um, get the pixel started, and um, it it is essentially at this point installing um, the newly created app that we just put in. Um, by the way, on the side note, I'm actually working this whole thing on on Git. So you can actually see all the changes, all the stuff that's going in, um, which is insane. Uh, I mean, we essentially wrote nothing. Um, most of it is kind of auto-generated. And and if you look at the logic, I mean, this is something interesting. We, we could have actually spent some time talking about the logic. But if you actually look at the logic, um, sorry, not here. All it does is, upon creating, it, it just loads the content that's inside the res. It really isn't doing anything. Welcome to 309. Um, yeah. So that's about it and if you want to create a new activity all you have to do is right click on java go to new activity and uh, you know just empty activity that's it and let's call it empty activity 2 why not and you'll notice how it automatically updates the manifest um, so there is this little Automatically, okay. So it registers the main activity into the manifest. Um, it it creates the XML, the res for the new activity, and it creates um, a Java document. As you see, I mean, it's doing nothing. In fact, it's not even in our flow. So if we run the software, we won't even be able to access this new activity. And we'll talk about in the next video how we would actually do something like that. Um, create buttons, access different activities, and essentially, you know, play around with the logic of um, our, our activities in Java.